Uh, hello, this is Justin uh, Nashville with ABR. Uh, this week we're finishing up with Aiden O'Shea. He hails from Arizona. So this strapping young man is 16 years old now. Uh, last time I saw him was in 2018. Uh, he came to us from another provider. And when he came to us, he was wearing a gel liner with lanyard strap. And uh, he had a lot of issues with just dermatitis, folliculitis, which happens a lot with liners. And just uh, the hygiene that you didn't keep up with liners combined with the lanyard suspension system created a lot of pistine for him, and uh, he didn't—he was not unable to really tolerate a lot of pressure pressure distally on his femoral condyles. Um, Aiden O'Shea has a true knee disarticulation secondary to osteosarcoma, and so as you can see, this is his residual limb. So it is—it's very bulbous distally. You can see the anatomy of the femoral condyles. He also has his patella in here. Can you flex your leg and and? extend it for me. He, he's moving his muscles in here and his patella has been left intact. And so a lot of times when you leave the patella intact, they, uh, patients cannot really tolerate the bone on bone, like patella bone to femoral bone. It elicits some pain. So we try to promote removing the patella just to uh, eliminate any variables that can cause some pain and, and discomfort. So because he has patella intact, we had to make some modifications to the socket just to kind of make it more bulletproof to eliminate any issues that might arise. And so when we first saw him, again, he's coming out of a gel liner, and uh, we put him in a skin fit suction socket, uh, combined with a little bit of uh, BOA panels for adjustability for when he loses volume and, and when he gets more active. Aiden O'Shea is really big in downhill skiing. He's, he's way better than most two-leggers out there, including myself. And he's also, uh, and he used to run a lot. He's still running a good amount, but not as much as, as he used to. I think his passion is sliding down the uh, slopes a little bit. Um, but mainly, like I said, uh, skin fit suction socket is what we transitioned him to. Uh, when we first saw him, he was unable to bear weight distally on his femoral condyles. So femoral condyles have bone in there called cancellous bone. And when you don't load that bone over time, it's very sensitive to bear weight on. So we want to promote distal end bearing, which promotes uh, stronger, denser, bony tissue that you can actually distal end bear on. So uh, he's acclimated quite well to the system. He's been very successful for the last two years. I haven't seen him in two years. He's been in the same socket, same knee and same foot. Uh, when I first saw him, we transitioned him to a pediatric all pro and a, a total knee junior. And he's been doing really well with this, but he's gained some weight and uh, he's a junior in the high school now, sophomore? Junior. Junior in high school now. So uh, he's back in town getting a little bit of a tune up and we transitioned him to some adult components. So this is a All Pro DS. It allows uh, torsion, which I think he's liking. It's a, it's a difference. It's a little bit heavier, but sometimes getting a function out of a foot to decrease stress and shear forces on the residual limb and the proximal joints is a good thing. And we transition him to an adult total, uh, total knee. So what we did with this socket here is a BOA panel. As you can see, he's very bulbous. And so uh, this BOA panel serves two functions. It allows him to don it and doff it and also adjustability for uh, as he loses volume he can kind of uh, put the tension to whatever his preference is. So that's why we did the bow panel down there and also um, you can't see it in the socket but we have a three millimeter plastizo pad over this patella that's serving as a void. Uh, that way if there's any pressure on this patella right here it pushes through the flexible inner into the three millimeter plastizo uh, pad to provide any uh, pressure relief that he might incur when he's walking around. So we had to get a little creative with the socket design to allow him to eliminate gel liners and uh, allow him to use his awesome surgery he has here and promote uh, good bone density. And so that's where we transitioned him to. Like I said, he's been in it for about 18 years. Uh, Aiden lives in Arizona. So uh, wearing uh, liners in Arizona, Sometimes you need to wear a liner for different amputations, but if you can get rid of not wearing a liner for certain amputations level, that's kind of what we uh, try to do. You know, liners over time are very expensive. Uh, they, for, especially for a kid, you gotta replace them more often than every six months, what uh, most insurances allow. And so and also at the time he was uh, 14, and getting a 14 year old to wash his liners every day is kind of a challenge sometimes. So this is a more hygienic, lighter weight, low maintenance prosthesis, because there's no, uh, lanyard straps, there's no lanyard uh, uh, puck on the bottom, and uh, there's no liner. So uh, all he does is put hand sanitizer on his leg and he goes down into the prosthesis. And uh, the inside of this prosthesis is the shape of his anatomy here. 
Uh, right now he's been wearing his leg for a while, so this circle right here is from the suction valve, which is pretty common. You know, we kind of feel any redness that lasts longer than 30 minutes might be a sign of concern. But he's been wearing his leg all morning, he just took it off for this video, so that's why you might notice some redness right here. But as you can see, his leg is very, very bony. And so uh, if you just allow for an expandable wall type socket, you, this patient can actually push past here. And uh, he had a little bit of issues doing that at first, two years ago, but he has since become tougher and is accustomed to this prosthesis and he's been doing really well with it. Like I said, I haven't seen him in two years. So uh, doing really well on a totally junior all pro and a skin fit uh, suction socket. And uh, we transitioned him to just adult components and then just gave him a new socket. And that's what we did down here. So uh, we'll show you how easy it is for Aiden to put his leg on. He uses hand sanitizer. We prefer hand sanitizer with aloe. It's a little bit softer on the skin. Uh, you can also get powdered lotion to help in the donning. So Aiden also has a uh, running prosthesis that, that we made him. And this is a running blade and this is a, just a, a polycentric friction knee right here. So we opted for this particular knee because a lot of the running knees are very heavy. And also for what he's doing, we don't really need a lot of the sophisticated features of hydraulics in his running knee for, to allow him to do what he wants to do. Well, we, so this is the same socket on here. The only thing we have on the back of here is uh, basically, a we call this the fancy word, a swing phase flexion limiter. It's basically a fancy word for um, preventing, it allows his, his knee to bounce back so he's not waiting on it. It restricts heel rise. And it basically allows him to not wait on his, on his blade so it kicks out faster for him. So it's a really cheap and easy way to allow people to run on walking knees. But you got to integrate something like this so um, they're not waiting on their knee and to limit the heel rise. So that's our fancy word for a tennis ball duct tape to the socket. Really low cost, easy to replace, easy to adjust. And uh, we kind of find the appropriate angle about you know maybe 60 degrees or so right here to allow it to kick back and everyone's angle is a little bit different based on their running cadence uh, but this angle has been working for him and uh, the same exact stock is just different design and uh, running blade right here so that's why he has a different running setup right here and this is his walking setup um, so Aiden you you came from this knee and this foot what are some differences you've noticed from this knee and this foot right here. I, I would say there's much more weight to this knee to where if you push it down, there's actual weight that you feel when walking rather than this, which kicks out, puts back in. This one feels much more realistic compared to that one. Okay. Um, what are some things you've noticed about this little red piece that twists right here? It's more of a pivot when you walk and turn at the same time. This moves with it. So if you were to like really cut an angle when walking, you would definitely get more compensation when this wouldn't move nearly as much as the other leg would. So uh, in your opinion, do you like having this? I guess. Okay, and then you feel like this is a good change? Yeah, I would say so. So if I understand you correctly, I think you were saying when you turn, this absorbs the turn, it doesn't go on the socket. Yeah. And you like right. that, that feeling. I do. So the uh, well, first thing you did mention was the weight of this knee. Uh, we all love for knees and prosthetics to be super duper lightweight. But for safety and activity and his body weight, it was time to transition him to adult components. So that's why he came in town uh, this past week to, to do that. And so he's had this set up for uh, three days now, two days now. Yeah. And so uh, he's been coming back regularly to check in on the redness, see how, how he's doing. We had to just uh, lower the carbon frame a little bit in his perineum. He was getting some pressure there. So this just allows it to uh, flex out more, flare out more. This flexible inner will actually flare out on its own with use. We can also take a heat gun and flare it out more to provide some relief. Uh, but he's been through the system before, so he kind of knows this will kind of deform on its own over time. Uh, but anytime we can get someone out of a gel liner and they have a good amputation, we like to take advantage of that just to promote good healthy skin, good uh, healthy bony tissue, and also eliminate a lot of the wear and tear and the process to get his leg on. You know, with a lanyard, he had to put his strap down in there and. Um, pulled himself into the leg. He also got tired of doing that so much he just removed the strap and he was just pushing down in there and just dealt with a lot of pistoning. And so uh, this is a really easy way to put a leg on and take it off and with some hand sanitizer and uh, he should be good for another few years. And so he's going to go back to Arizona and do his thing and we're looking forward to seeing him uh, shredding powder on the slopes. Alright? Good luck out there, Aiden.